international law and uses of force, Yemen and Palestine as example. In this video, we present a reading of the article International Law and Uses of Force by the Yemeni writer, Bushra al-Maktari. Before starting to review the article, I will give you a quick background on the following points. Yemen, since mid-2014. The country has entered a civil war. And 10 countries have intervened militarily to fight on the side of the legitimate forces fighting with the Houthi group. While the countries of the region and international powers have played a major role in fueling the war in Yemen. Palestine, the victors of World War II led by Britain, granted the land of Palestine to the Jews. And for more than 70 years, the Palestinian people were subjected to genocide and displacement by the Jewish state. The last of which was Israel's construction of a separating fence and the construction of Jewish settlements. And on October 7, 2023, a movement Palestinian Hamas carried out a qualitative attack and breached the separation wall. From that date until this moment, the Palestinians in Gaza have been subjected to acts of genocide by Israel, supported by the United States of America. Bab al-Mandab, it is a waterway in the Red Sea belonging to Yemen, linking the Mediterranean Sea to the north and the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean to the south. The Houthis, who rule the capital, Sana'a, announced their solidarity with the Palestinians in Gaza and threatened to target any ship belonging to Israel if it passed through the Red Sea. They carried out a number of operations, the most famous of which was the seizure of the ship Galaxy. And accordingly, an American-British coalition carried out air raids on a number of Yemeni regions under the pretext of protecting the security of navigation in the Red Sea. Now, let's review the article for you. A National Law and Uses of Force by Bushra al-Maktari In a world governed by international law, the delicate balance between power and justice is often tested. Today, we examine two examples that have become symbolic of the challenges faced by weaker nations in the face of dominant powers. This is the story of Yemen and Palestine, where international law and the uses of force collide. Throughout history, dominant states have violated international law, justifying their actions under the umbrella of self-defense and protecting national interests. This narrative has been employed to impose strategies of deterrence and shock and awe. The Israeli entity's war on the Gaza Strip has been justified as self-defense, granting it the right to protect its people. However, the consequences of this ongoing conflict have undermined regional stability and perpetuated the suffering of innocent civilians. Amidst this turmoil, the United States, invoking its exclusive sovereign right, launched military operations in Yemen citing threats to navigation in the Red Sea. The U.S. intervention aimed to safeguard American interests in the region, ensuring freedom of navigation in general comes from establishing a state of regional and international stability and reducing the conflict, the first of which is stopping the Israeli entity's war on Gaza. However, the American strategy at the present time has turned into part of managing and fueling the conflict, and therefore its policy is far from appeasement, from its disruption of international law that requires the protection of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, through its objection to the ceasefire, to Congress, dropping the project to investigate the crimes of the Israeli entity. In Gaza, the American administration not only ignores the dimensions of the Israeli conflict, in escalating tensions, but also pushes it to new levels, as its military operations in Yemen have transformed the situation in the Red Sea, from a security threat to a theater of open military operations. But the uses of force chosen by powerful nations have unintended consequences. 
The continued war in Gaza disrupts fragile regional balances. While the concentration of military forces in the Red Sea creates a multi-power military zone, international law guarantees freedom of navigation for all nations. But the use of force by the United States limits the options for countries overseeing the Red Sea to address the navigation crisis. The equation of war becomes a harsh reality with far-reaching consequences. In their pursuit of preserving navigation in the Red Sea, the U.S. administration reclassified the Houthi group as a terrorist entity. However, this move not only undermines diplomatic efforts, but also fuels the conflict, prolonging the suffering of the Yemeni people. The approach of relying solely on military strikes to address threats in Yemen has proven insufficient. The Houthi group continues its attacks, targeting shipping traffic and commercial vessels, creating heightened risks and endangering global economic stability. The international community recognizes the need to protect navigation in the Red Sea. The formation of a military protection force by the European Union demonstrates a collective effort, turning the Red Sea into a contested military zone. Paradoxically, the dominant powers, driven by their exclusive sovereign rights, jeopardize the values of justice and human rights. The ongoing killing of Palestinians in Gaza and the destruction of Yemen under various pretexts demonstrate how international law can be used to establish inhumane conditions. As we reflect on the stories of Yemen and Palestine, we are reminded of the delicate balance between power and justice in the realm of international law. It is a constant struggle to ensure that the uses of force align with the principles of peace, justice, and the protection of human rights.